This is the first of a two-part tutorial on how to create and securely implement a Spectator Web UI button control for an X-Lite show. The user interface is primarily for Spectator participation from a mobile device. This UI design is simple, intuitive, responsive, and can be implemented securely. Following is a brief demo of the Web UI controls. The API commands provided by XLites in their GitHub repository will be used to communicate with the WebSocket server. However, the commands are presented in HTTP GET format, and since we want to primarily communicate using WebSockets, these commands will have to be converted to JSON format so that the WebSocket server can understand. This client was coded with plain vanilla JavaScript. I have the client app open in Visual Studio Code so I can highlight a few key areas. The first is the client's WebSocket event handler. At the top of the WebSocket.js file is a server and port configuration for the WebSocket server. This server and port configuration assumes that the WebSocket client is installed on the same server as the XLite scheduler. If the client is hosted on a different web server, the X scheduler IP and port number configured in the XLite scheduler must be added. So replace location.hostname with the X scheduler IP and location.port with 90, for example. The other important area is the IMG or image folder. Now this obviously stores the system images. It also holds the images for each step or song in a discovered playlist. For the client to display an image with the current step, a 218 by 218 JPEG file must be added to this folder. There's also this login.html which is provided for authenticating a show administrator. Part of the initial configuration process is to provide additional data to the client. This playlist.html is for providing the additional data. So when an administrator loads this page for the first time, he or she will be redirected to the login.html page. This page will load successfully after the authentication process. The username and password for the authentication process is located at the top of the login.js file. The username is entered as shown but the number to the right of the hash variable is not the actual password. It is a hash representation of the password. The password is X scheduler buttons and is located at the bottom of this file. Both the username and password may be changed. To change the password, enter the desired password in a hash generator. These can be found online. Just search for hash generator. Replace the hash at the top of the screen with the new hash. To authenticate successfully, the actual password and not the hash must be used. The client will hash the supplied password and compare the hash to the stored hash. There is a file in this data folder called getshow.txt. It is only here as a reference for the structure of the setting file that is called getshow.dat. The getshow.dat file is created on the server when the client first loads. The client uses this file to update the screen with custom information. We'll discuss this in more detail later on. Next, we'll discuss how to configure the client in the XLite scheduler. This client is published to a GitHub repository for those who wish to use it as a guide. There's a link in the description below. To replace the XLite's client with a custom web client, locate the XLite's install path. 
In this example, Xlites is installed in C program files Xlites. Add the folder containing the new custom web client to the install path. Then open the Xlites scheduler and click Edit, Options, and enter the name of the subfolder in the web directory field and click OK. And save this new configuration. Open the browser and enter the scheduler IP and configured port, then click Enter. Now the URL should reflect the new application path, and the client should now connect and display the current status. When the client connects to the server, if the status is idle, it sets the image element to showstop.png and set the status element to idle. The artist, album, and next elements are left in their default state. The client then requests a configuration file from the server and use the return data to update the title at the top and the links at the bottom of the page. The getshow.dat configuration file is located in a subfolder called xscheduled data in the xlight show folder. A show administrator may update this file with personalized data for the name, Facebook page, and YouTube channel. There's also an additional link for the title. This could be used for any purpose. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the client process. Notice that there are only two files in the xscheduler data path. I'll click refresh to simulate when the client first connects to the server. We see that the client created the show configuration file if one did not already exist. It will eventually update the elements with the new data. Now I'll start a playlist in the scheduler and observe that there are actually no existing keys in local storage. When the status changes to plain, a data file is instantly created on the server and a key containing the same data is also created in the client's local store. When the step changes, the client will first search the local store for additional data. If no new data is found, it will then search the image folder for an image that matches the name of the current step. I'll select a step in the playlist that may not have an associated image file. If it does not find an image that matches the current step, it will use the default playing image. The data cached to the local store and copied to the server initially only contains the list of songs in the current playlist. The additional data must be supplied by a show administrator as a one-time setup for each playlist. This is because the scheduler API does not include a command to obtain the album or artist information. Now we'll discuss how to add the additional information to the local browser store. Enter the following path in your browser. This should be the web server name, port number, the client's folder path, pages, playlist.html. Enter the username and password and click Login. The purpose of this form is to load an existing playlist from the client's local store. Click the checkbox to the left of the title to be updated. All the values for that existing row will be loaded into the input boxes above. Enter the additional information and click Save. The image file should be 218 by 218 pixels in JPEG format and should be added to the IMG folder on the server. I will pause and update a few more rows. Now that we have several rows updated, I'll go ahead and click Upload. Now browse to the Xscheduled Data folder when the File Save dialog appears. The default file name references the current playlist and should not be changed. Click Save, then Yes to overwrite the existing file. Now let's take a look at what happens if we delete the data in the local store. Now that the key is deleted, there should be no data when we refresh. The data in the local store should be recreated when the playlist is restarted. And now we'll refresh. Notice that the data in the local store was populated with the data that was recently updated to the server. This confirms that the client also synchronizes the data from the server to the local store. Now let's see what happens when we start a different playlist. A new key with a different list of songs was created. Now when we refresh, we're prompt to select a playlist from the option menu. 
This playlist should also be updated and pushed to the server so it can be synchronized to all connected clients. Now if we look in the Xschedule data subfolder, we'll see that a new data file was created for the new playlist. This concludes the discussion of the web client's process. In part two, we will discuss the secure implementation of the client and server. Thanks for watching.